we have a rowdy table back there. I see who it is. Um, welcome to our annual uh, talent show at Chili Supper. However, this year, as you know, is our first chili cook-off uh, event. So thank you for all that provided among the chilies for tonight. This event is the youth group's largest uh, fundraiser of the year. It is something that we enjoyed to do and become a St. Mark's family tradition here uh, each year to have a good time and to laugh and to just enjoy each other's fellowship. The proceeds from this event go each year into the youth group's youth fund. We have a home that is used for mission trips, that is used for outings um, and gatherings. However, as many of you have already heard, we had a youth whose father tragically passed away yesterday at the UPS. That would be uh, Dallas Carroll, Ryan Carroll's dad. Just last Friday, my friend last night went to the Jewish Temple for spot service, and Dallas had attended the event. The youth group has decided that all proceeds tonight that were raised will go to Ryan and his family. So. the tables that are also get uh, gold little baskets that are giving extra offerings that you would like to give um, can be dropped in those as well. We have about 12 acts for you, so we will go ahead and get started and we'll turn this over to our MC for you.
think they might be better than them. <laughs> Maybe not, I don't know. Uh, actually, this is a little story. It's about Brother Burel. Now, Brother Burel ran a uh, general store years ago next to an old school. And the uh, bus drivers would hang out there right before they would go to pick up the children. And they'd play checkers and drink knee high soda pops and just enjoy themselves. And uh, they liked hanging out there because they liked to listen to Brother Burel. Because Brother Burel was known to quote scripture every time he made a sale in his store. One day they were sitting there playing checkers and hanging out before school was over. And uh, this man came by and he said, I'd like to buy a, uh, a knife for my daddy for his birthday. So Brother Burel hung it up, or rung it up, and he said, Honor thy father and mother. And this little boy was in there with his mama, and she got a little piece of candy, and, and he rung it up, and he said, Suffer, the little children. <laughs> then there was this fellow come up in front of the store in a big old fancy truck with a big old horse uh, trailer behind it. He walked in, and he strutted around, he had a 10-gallon hat on, he had a big old belt buckle, he had a ring on every finger, he said, uh, I got a nice horse out there, and I need a blanket. You got any horse blankets in here? Brother B. Red said, one minute, sir. And he went back and he pulled out a blanket and he put it on the counter and he said, that'll be uh, $50, sir. The big dude with the buckle said, you don't understand, I got a $2 million horse out there. I ain't putting no $50 blanket on no $2 or $2 million horse. You gotta think better than this. One minute, sir. Brother Burel went back and he got same blanket, different color. <laughs> Brought it out, slapped it on the counter. He said, that'll be seventy-five dollars, sir. I don't think you're getting me. I got a two million dollar horse back there. Ain't you got nothing better than a seventy-five dollar blanket? <clears throat> One minute, sir. Brother Burel went back. Same like it, different color. Now, folks, these bus drivers are watching him, and they are starting to wonder what Bible verse he is going to be quoting after the sale. <laughs> and he slams it on the counter and he says, "That'll be a uh, hundred dollars, sir." He says, "That's more like it." Gave him a hundred dollars, and he left. But the real sitting there at that cash register, and he has a moment of silence, and he says. He was a stranger, and I took him in. <laughs> now, I'd like to tell you about Lena and Ollie. Now, Lena and Ollie, I don't know if any of you have ever heard Lena and Ollie jokes, yeah? But they're from Iowa and Minnesota. They live there. They, they live on a buffalo farm. They have 12 children. And, uh, and uh, one day, little baby Spinny was sick. So Lena stayed home with Spinny. It was a Sunday morning, and Ollie went with the uh, other children to church. And when he came back, he had two black eyes. Not one, two black eyes. And Lena says, Ollie, how'd you get those two black eyes? Oh, Lena, I'm not gonna tell you. Ollie, you tell me, you were just in church. How did you get those two black eyes? Well, Lena, you know Bertha, who sits in front of us every Sunday, and this is big birthday, yeah. I can say that. <laughs> when we stood up for the first hymn, her dress was kind of stuck. <laughs> so I put it back out, and she turned around and popped me in the right eye. And it, and it really hurt Lena, it really hurt. And she said, well, Ollie, you got two black eyes, not one. What happened to the left eye, Ollie? He said, well, Got up for the next hymn, and uh, I put it back in. <laughs> now I'm going to share a song with you, and I'm going to dedicate it to Nell Carter. I grew up as a girthy girl in the 70s and 80s. Uh, there was not much rep representation for girthy girls in on television in the 70s and 80s. There was no Carter and Natalie in Facts of Life. <laughs> and 
those were the ones. And she sang this back in the 70s on Broadway. It's called A Fist of Hay, but you didn't transpose. <laughs>
Camp Singers, come on up.
Just home and love, the words are small, four little letters each, and yet you will not find in all the wide and gracious range of speech. Two more so tenderly complete when angels talk in heaven above, I'm sure they have no words more sweet than home and love. Just home and love, it's hard to guess which of the two are best to gain. Home without love is bitterness. Love without home is often pain. No, each alone will seldom do. Somehow they travel hand in glove. If you win one, you must have two, both home and love. And if you've both, well then I'm sure you ought to sing my whole day long. It doesn't matter if you're poor, with these to make the vine your song. And so I praisefully repeat, when angels talk in heaven above, there are no words more simply sweet than home and love. Thank you. He makes us laugh, he makes us cry, a man of many times. <coughs> Christina Schotter, I call you to the stage. For a little talk, you bet. What can I do to help? <coughs> I think we should get Lynn Benson up to tell another joke while we're going to get set up. <laughs> Her jokes are way better than mine. Yes, they are. <laughs>
Mark's on the road. I hear it coming already. This is fantastic. That's a bit of all right. That's a bit of all right. Thank you all. His very own debut of poetry, our very own Ken Roberts.
I can't have to introduce our final act of the evening. Okay. This is our final act. This will be done by Genesis, our youth group. Um, and in the past, uh, similar tonight, we try to start out with something, a little bit of humor and fun, and then the last one is something that we want us all to take home and with a serious message. So please pay attention to what the youth are bringing in this act of skit. We thank you all for coming out, everyone for participating in the cook and for the wonderful uh, acts and fellowship that we've had this evening. Again, we'll go baskets are for any love offerings that you want to contribute. All funds tonight will go to Ryan Carroll and his family in the death of the party.
I'm sure that it's a secret to everyone here, but in case you hadn't heard, our very own Ken Rose will turn 50 this next week. <laughs> and he is going to be absent from us tomorrow. He's taking our youth group and confirmands to St. Michael's Orthodox as part of his confirmation class work. And then he will be going on a much deserved and needed vacation uh, for their birthday. So this is our last chance while he's still young and in his 40s <laughs> to say a happy birthday. So come on out front and center, my man. Happy